Okay guys, as promised, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make my lentil soup. I'm gonna use this tin cup that I have. This is about 14 ounces of liquid. So I'm not even measuring really cups. I'm just looking at the size of cup I have because I'm so used to making this uh, soup. But it doesn't matter how much lentil you use. It's what you do to the recipe that always comes out good. Okay, so we're gonna start off with, I'm gonna use three of these cups because we love a large pot of soup. So that is one, two, There we go. Three. Like I said, I'm making a large amount of soup, so that's what I'm using. But you could cook one cup, one cup of lentil if you want. You don't have to put as much as I put, but just to show you how I regulate everything. So I've got my three cups of lentil, and I'm just going to give it a fast rinse, and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Okay. And now I'm just going to put a little bit of water, not a lot, but I will cover them. So here we go. Maybe a little more. Now we know this is not the right amount of water for the amount of lentil I have, right? This is going to make a very large pot of soup. So I'm just going to put a little extra of water. You just want to cook the lentils at this point. Okay, so that should be good. Like I said, the amount of water I have in there is less than what I need right now. But the idea is I just want to cook these lentils first. Okay, now to this, my husband again this morning made his delicious potatoes. And we had extra, so I am going to throw some cooked potatoes that I have. Now, if you don't have cooked potatoes, just use lentil. I don't want to waste these, so they're going to go into the pot. Or if you want to put some potato, you could cut a potato or two. Depends how much you want. I have them, so I'm not going to waste these. There we go. Like I said, these are cooked. They're cooked with a little bit of oil. They're cooked with a little bit of maple and salt. But they're going to be good in this soup anyhow, so I'm not going to waste any. We had leftover, and that's what I'm adding. If you don't have any already cooked, you could dice up some some potatoes and throw it into this pot. Now, as you can see, like I was saying, I have water in here, but I don't have the amount that I really need in there. But to this, I'm going to add salt, and I know approximately how much salt I like in a large pot of soup. So I am going to add... That much to start off with it's like about a tablespoon and I'll probably end up using more later and you don't have to worry about adding salt right now you could always add the salt later so we've got salt we're gonna add some black pepper here we go we like black pepper so I'm gonna put a lot of it now at this point if you want to put some olive oil you can do that I'm going to leave the oil out because we already have oil that my husband cooked the potatoes in. Or if you want to leave it fat free, that's okay also. So I'm just going to give this a good mix. And I'm going to cook these lentils. Now it's not, it's not going to be soup, it's going to be cooked lentils when you're done. Now if you don't have a pressure cooker, I'm going to say to you, a must. One of the best investments you're ever going to make. I should open the light, right? Okay, so I'm going to put this in my pressure cooker. There we go. Let me just put on the lid and then I'm making everything fall. Not very good. Okay, so let me put on the lid. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so I have my, I'm using a star fruit, of course, and 
free promotion because I love it. There you go. Uh, we are not going to do beans. I'm going to do soup. And since I'm doing it, I'm going to do it on, um, let me see, uh, lowest 10 minutes. So I am going to do medium 15 minutes. Sorry, I was <laughs> completely off target here. So I'm not going to put it on high. I'm going to put 15 minutes on medium and that's it. I have my top, of course, you want to make sure that's on the right place. And that's it. I'm going to press start and... These are going to cook. As soon as I hear that beep, I'm going to release the steam and then I'll show you what I do to my soup. Very easy. You can't get easier than this. And remember, you don't have to do as much soup as I did. You could do less. You could do regular cups. Like I said, this one here is about one and a half, about one and a half cups of lentil. So that's what I'm using to measure because that's what I usually do. Um, I use three of these because I'm going to get a very full pot of soup. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to make some naan bread while this is cooking. I'm going to make naan bread and soup is going to be ready in no time at all. So that's how easy it is to make this. When, I, when it's finished cooking, I'm going to show you how I add whatever ingredients I want to add to it. But for now, we're just going to cook the lentil. Okay, I'm going to show you. I've got... Uh, I'd say one and a half cups of flour. Now, I'm not going to use the, um, the sourdough this time. Just to show you guys that you don't need to use sourdough. I'm going to use rosemary instead. Because rosemary goes really nice. Rosemary goes really nice with lentil. So I am going to put rosemary in this bread. Sorry about the manicure. I've got... Some of my nails are done and some are not. <laughs> okay, we're going to add a little bit of salt to this. There we go. Just to show you how easy it really is. Okay, move this around. Put a little bit of magic. I always put about a, a tablespoon of magic. Okay. If I want more rosemary, maybe a little more rosemary. Okay. And now we're going to add water. A little bit at a time and uh, I've been just doing flatbread recipes these days but just to show you that you really don't need a recipe once you know the feel you're good remember always here, let me put my burner on so this way I'm using my ugly pan, remember? I use it only for that. Three squirts of oil. It doesn't even... Three squirts of oil is nothing because you need about 12 squirts to make a, a teaspoon of uh, oil. So it's just so that it gives it a nice little golden look to it. So... Here we go. Done. I am just going to add some flour to my counter. It's a little bit of rosemary. It doesn't matter. Where did I put my flour? And I'm going to just dump it there. This doesn't just make naan bread. This also makes a fast pizza dough, guys. It's so versatile. It really is. Especially like my daughter just finished work, so I was able to come out of my office. I was editing my pumpkin bread that you're gonna, you've probably already seen it by the time you see this one. 
shows you how easy it is to do pumpkin pumpkin uh, flat bread and that's it just knead your dough so I'm a little off camera eh? now if you want you could even put uh, cooked lentils in here you could put uh, if you want extra protein to your bread there's so many things you can do let me just put that over there and this goes great with any soup and especially today it's snowing out again my husband's gonna be going out to clean snow so a hot soup is gonna be perfect Okay, now this time, like you saw, I put no sourdough. I like it with the sourdough because it gives it that nice sour bread taste. But if you don't have sourdough, you don't have to put it in. And the best part is sourdough is so easy. The starter is so easy to make. Basically, you need flour and water. Let it sit for a couple of days. Keep adding some flour to it. And uh, I have a recipe if you want to go look. Okay, so sprinkle. Oh, sorry about that. And I'm going to let this rest for a few minutes. You don't have to, but it, it doesn't hurt, okay? Now, this one feels a little firmer than what I normally do, which is not a problem either, because all you have to do is use a rolling pin. best way to cook is stress-free you don't want to stress making meals you know okay should be good so how big and how how big you want this is really up to you you do want to make them nice and flat and sometimes you'll notice that when you're cooking them uh, it starts making like an air pocket and they open up like a little pita bread See the longer it sits the better your dough is gonna get trick is not to make a stick on your counter guys I have a wooden counter here but if you have a nice cold stone counter it's probably gonna be better for you okay push this aside we're gonna cut another one now I didn't even make it sit and rest I said it was and then I didn't do it why? Because I'm always in a hurry, guys. <laughs> always doing things last minute. If you let it rest, it's always better. You know the saying, do what the priest says, not what the priest does. <laughs> so, here we go. I said I was going to make a rest, and then I didn't. And it doesn't have to rest long. Five minutes, ten minutes, it's good enough. Okay, so... Here's my first one. I'm throwing it in. I'm not even going to bring you over to see it. Or maybe I will. Give me a second. And these you don't have to worry about. Like the ones that I did with the onions. Where you want to cook them a little slower. Because they, um, they had onions in it. There's no onions here. So you don't have to worry if, if it uh, cooks too fast. Always check it underneath. 
That's how that looks. Almost done there. Sorry. I am going to flip it. Yeah, this way maybe. There we go. Beautiful. And there you start to see how it's swelling up. That's because it's making air pockets underneath. And it opens up like a pita bread almost. So that's how we're going to do these ones. They won't take long. I'm going to continue making this. And then when I'm done, we're going to... Uh, yeah, Beautiful. Uh, when I'm done, I'm going to show you what I do to my uh, lentil soup. But isn't this easy? Just make sure that you have your your heat not too high. Mine's getting really hot and I have it at two. So you don't want these to burn, right? If you get a little bit of brown spots, that's okay. All right, so that's how easy it is. So let me continue doing these and then I'll show you my soup. Remember I said this one came a little firmer? Because it's firmer, I do have to stretch it with a rolling pin. Otherwise, if it was less firm, I could have done this all by hand. But you know, sometimes that's what happens. Boom. Going fast. They're getting cooked faster than I can roll them out. All right, guys. There's my beautiful bread. I've got a whole stack of these. All I'm doing now is waiting for the soup. I've got three more minutes on the soup. I didn't have it there for long, 15 minutes. So by the time the pressure cooker came to pressure, I was able to make my bread. And now the lentils are almost done. And then I'm going to release the steam and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that soup. So don't go away. This is the little one I just made. Look how beautiful. And steaming hot too. Mmm. Come try it, Phil. This one? Yeah, how do you like it with the rosemary? Mmm. Good? No, very good. Mm. Very tasty. Okay. Alright guys. I'll see you in a bit when I release my pressure cooker. All right, guys, I am going to make a very fast coconut and cashew cream to put on the soup tonight. And I didn't have a chance to soak my cashews, so it's going to have to do the way it is right now. Last minute, that's what happens. Okay, no measuring, guys, you know me. Okay. Put water just to the nuts. I should be good. If I need more, I will add it. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of salt. Yeah, like that. And we're gonna put a little bit of green hot pepper and make it nice and spicy. There we go. That's what happens when you don't think. There we go. Now, let me put it in the right way. See, the right way this time. make it even a little hotter. Hold on, let me get some more hot pepper. Shut this pan. See what happens when you have too much of certain foods? Okay, so we're going to put, get all wrinkly, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. All right, so we're going to just blend this up. Where did I put my pepper? And we'll see what that cream is going to be like. This is going to be delicious with our with our soup. Mm. 
Mm, 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 mm. Mm, my God. Holy moly. Okay. I'm just going to let that sit for two minutes. That is going to be good. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Okay. I'm not going to put you completely under because you're going to say you can't see with the steam. Okay. There is my lentil. It's just cooked. That's all it is. My lentil is cooked. I'm going to taste it. They should be completely cooked. Mm-hmm. They are. Now I'm going to add my water. Okay, mix it up. Now, this is where you say, well, I want more water or I want less water. Guys, you don't have to make the quantity I made. I made a lot because we're going to have leftover. My husband's going to have some to bring to the country. So he has something to eat. And soup is pretty much done. Erica's not finished working. So I am going to put this back on. Just on heat. There we go. And the little bit of water that I did put in here. What it did was it made all the flavors you need. So when you added water, the flavors are there. Taste it for salt. Mm. So good. A little extra salt. I know my family wants it just a little saltier. But again, it's your soup, guys, right? If you don't want a lot of salt, if you want to add garlic, if you want to add a bay leaf, that's really up to you. Now, I made a lot of lentil. But like I said, make less. You want to put at least the same amount. If you're doing one cup lentil, you want to do at least one cup of um, water. And then after the lentil is cooked, you can add as much water as you want to turn it into a soup. And remember how much water you want it thicker, you use less water. You want it, if you want it more watery, you add extra water. But this soup is ready and done. So I'm just going to put this aside. I've got it on heat. So this way Erica could finish work. And then I'm going to plate her plate. Mm -hmm. I will add extra black pepper because we love it. I will even add this time around. I'm going to add just maybe one little squirt of liquid smoke that's it wasn't that fast how long did that take me really it took longer for the uh the pressurizing of the pressure cooker than the cooking of the soup and the uh oh my god this is gonna be delicious look at that i will have to add a little extra water just to dilute it so i can make a little swirl on top of Erica's plate not too much and this only gets thicker and thicker because I didn't even soak the nuts okay I need a squeeze bottle I'm telling you vegan food is one of the easiest things you can do I don't want to go be putting my fingers in here. Notice how thick it's getting. I, I could have even put uh, extra hot pepper. All right, guys. So here we are. We're going to put it in our bottle. And if it does get a little thicker, I'm going to put this in the fridge until she's ready. But if it does get a little thicker, all I have to do is just put a little bit. Uh, just put a little bit of... Uh, either lime so normally I would soak the cashews but this time I did not because I decided last minute I was gonna do this but it's not the end of the world if they're not soaked there's my little 
cashew cream, cashew and coconut actually. Mm, my God, this is going to be good. Okay, so I'll see you in a bit, guys. Some bread. And we're going to get our soup ready. All right, here we go. This is Erica's. put a little bit of our cream and some extra black pepper and there you go guys how simple and how easy was that soup it really took no time at all to make it and you really can't make a mistake add as much water as you like and you're good as golden so i hope you like this recipe and if you give it a try come back let me know what you think don't forget if you want to add oil to your soup you can put some delicious olive oil while you're cooking it it's delicious we left the oil out because the potatoes had some oil in there but very easy to do so i'm gonna say i love you guys remember always cook with compassion you don't need to put animal products in your food for your food to be delicious and I'll see you in my next video, guys. Erica, yeah. you want to come and try, babe? Oh, where's your spoon? Yeah. Yeah. I know you're hungry. Mommy's going to feed you. Here, Erica. See if you like it. See if you like the bread the way it is. And if you're okay with the soup. And the cream I made. I made a coconut cashew with lime and hot pepper. Mmm good oh that's really good and how about with the naan bread or with the pita bread mm. good mm -hmm. yeah all right guys i'll see you in my next video bless you oh my god black pepper went up my nose good mm. okay that's very good enjoy that's your plate you want more cream for more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends.